Well, hello there. I do hope you're all well. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different today because um, we did yesterday's video about the gap and talked about sovereignty and showing how really we've thrown away our own sovereignty. It got me re remembering back to Saturday night when I listened to Nick Abbott's show. Now, he was at his blistering best. Where he... For the last few years, he's been talking about how this has been nothing to do with, with taking back control and uh, how ridiculous all that everything that has been about Brexit has been. And on Saturday, he was at his blistering best with detailed files. Uh, how, you know, he talked about how the Norway deal on fishing is in jeopardy. And then he talks you gave a great analogy about how the world is like in school at the school playground everybody's in little gangs and and he talks about in that way of trading blocks and he's just brilliant at it and people that ring him up I think they underestimate him because he does all the cow noises and uh, and uh, says silly things and, and I think he does it on purpose when he talks about <laughs> about the Scottish weather and uh, getting the weather wrong. He does it on purpose just for fun. And I think people underestimate him, but he's sharp as a tack. And, it, and he's brilliant at just dismantling Brexiters, making them look like absolute fruit loops. And the thing is, oh, so when they do ring up, it's not hard. Some of them are really absolute boneheaded fruit loops. So I'm only going to do this once because I just thought it was just brilliant. So it's two hours of just unadulterated hilarity, facts, information, and and he succinctly dismantles the whole point of Brexit brilliantly in his own little way. So enjoy. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Everything is going extremely well. I would say he's incompetent, but I don't want to do that because that's not nice. Thanks, Donny. Thanks for being nice. You're the most nice person ever. By the way, there is a polar ice bomb on the way. <coughs> Get ready because it could be a white Christmas and a very, very cold one. It could go down to minus seven on Jesus' birthday. <coughs> Weather for the next three days across the UK will be unsettled, turning milder towards the start of next week. But up until the 25th, it's going to be like blooming winter outside. Blustery showers potentially falling as the snow over mountains. <laughs> Nobody lives up a mountain. Why is that important? No one cares. Um, but um, it might not to just be uh, on mountains. There might be a chance of a white Christmas on lower ground. Get Bing Crosby on the phone. He'll be thrilled. Forecasts for the upcoming week say as much as five inches of snow may fall uh, today today across Scotland and could continue to fall every day until the big day. Well, now, wait a minute. I'm going to have to check on that. One moment, please. Nope. Nope. <laughs> That's completely untrue. Liar! Yeah, there is no snow over Scotland. Well, certainly not in Glasgow, anyway, which is the only part of Scotland that uh, I'm interested in, you know, apart from all of the other parts. Stunning. Very, very pretty. Embra. Beautiful. So a cold front will be arriving on uh, Thursday next week, bringing in minus two centigrade temperatures. And it's all because of a polar ice bomb headed our way. Thank you. On the other... That was the mail telling us that, about a polar ice bomb. On the other hand, I, I cross-checked. I've done my homework. Can you believe that? No. If you're hoping for snow over Christmas, says the Gloucester News, it's time to start managing your expectations. This is a Gloucester truth bomb. It says with two weeks left until Santa's gift giving, fairy tale scenes of a snow covered chimney scape. 
I screwed that up. How many things have I screwed up uh, already? I mean, uh, you know, uh, approximately how many things have I screwed up already? 8,737,540,000. Thanks. Glad to see someone's keeping count. With two weeks left until Santa's gift giving, fairy tale scenes of snow covered chimneys are unlikely to materialise. They ain't going to be here. There had been some reports that the UK was going to be caught in a beast from the east. Well, they called it a, a polar ice bomb, but, uh, you know, more or less the same. Some reports, yeah, in the mail. But the Gloucester News says that the Met Office says that there's nothing to indicate a cold front is heading towards us from the east. Well, what are they talking about then? Is there or is there not a polar ice bomb? No! Senior Met Office... Of this is the way it's written. This is absolutely priceless. Gloucester News. It says there had been some reports that the UK was going to be caught in a beast from the east, but the Met Office has said there is nothing to indicate a cold front is heading towards us from the east. Senior Met Office Press Officer Graham said there is nothing to indicate a cold front is heading towards us from the east. <laughs> <laughs> That's priceless. <laughs> Excellent news reporting, the Gloucester News. <laughs> it actually puts it that way. Brilliant. Looking at the weather pattern over the next week, we can see, we can't rather see anything other than wet, windy and milder weather, which is actually quite difficult to say. I'm doing very well, no? No. Wet, windy and milder weather. You try it. Wet, windy weather. The festive period is likely to see more settled conditions, dry weather and sunshine for a time. Wow, sunshine. We could see fog and frost and some cold nights with temperatures around average, but maybe slightly higher. In Gloucester, wherever that is. In other hot stories from Gloucester News, Frangipani Indian restaurant opens in Cheltenham with huge deals. Dobby's Garden Centre in Gloucester to build Crazy Golf Course. And get a gigantic pig in a blanket delivered to your door this Christmas. Which, to be fair, is an advertorial. It isn't actually a pig. It's a sandwich from Subway. Because there's nothing that says Christmas quite like a sandwich from Subway. <coughs> so, uh, no deal is likely. Now, very, very, very likely. It's very, very likely. Ain't that right, Boris? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. No deal is now very, very likely, said Boris Johnson, who is the Prime Minister of this country. <laughs> That's never going to seem right. Boris Johnson warned last night as Emmanuel Macron and Angela Merkel refused to talk to him. He called them up and they pretended they weren't in. <laughs> <laughs> the Prime Minister declared yesterday that leaving without an agreement would be wonderful for the UK and we'd be able to do exactly what we want. <laughs> you know, like a child. <laughs> look it up on the internet and look, at, look in his eyes. He has the look of terror in his eyes these days. Every time he's coming out with uh, this old guff, you can see he doesn't believe it. He's actually a really bad liar, which is odd, because he's had so much practice. Correct. You can see behind the artfully distressed hair don't that he doesn't believe any of this. He always looks like a boy who's been caught stealing from the tuck shop and thinks he can talk his way out of getting the cane. Well, you can't. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Ahead of the looming deadline, it was revealed that the French president and the German chancellor rejected Downing Street's request to hold emergency talks on the telephone to break the impasse. Huh. Instead, the two most important leaders in Europe demanded that all negotiations are conducted... Th and I can't say the word negotiations without thinking of Mrs M. We're still not missing you, Mrs M. In case you were wondering. The two most important leaders in Europe, which don't include ours, have demanded all the negotiations are conducted through officials in Brussels, which is how people who hold all the cards play the game. A hey, Boris? Johnson and the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen have set a deadline tomorrow 
to decide whether there is any point continuing negotiations. Isn't it exciting? No. I don't think I can stand it anymore. I, I, at this point, I don't care if we do die, do die, do die. We just want Brexit. It's thought that the Prime Minister could actually fly to Brussels if he believes that there is a chance of getting a deal, which, to my eyes, will look very much like us crawling across the carpet in supplication. But, of course, will be sold to us as a triumphant invasion of the European Union. <sighs> what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. 0345. 6060973 text 84850 email nick a at lbc.co.uk and if you're on twitter it's at lbc right here's that thing that people were whining at me about uh, yesterday because um, i said i was going to say it and i didn't say it stop whining norway it's a fish thing God, another one of these fish things. Oh, no. Norway could seal off its fishing waters to britain and the european boats from january the 1st because of the stalemate in the Brexit talks. It means that an earlier UK-Norway deal would not take effect. Because we thought we got that whole Norway thing sewn up. Because we like the fish that they've got round their parts. But we don't like the fish that we've got round our parts. So Norway now is saying that, uh, oh, no, you can't take our fish now. Huh. You do realise that this means war. Or... Visteka i kvelt, as they say in Norway. Any Norwegians listening? Did I get that right? It doesn't mean uh, this means war in Norwegian. It means something uh, uh, apropos, but not that. Visteka i kvelt. Anyone? Anyone at all? The UK, Norway, it, it's not rude. Well, I hope it isn't. <laughs> I've said it twice now. The UK-Norway deal was trumpeted in September as giving UK fishermen access to £32 million worth of seafood in the cod-rich Norwegian waters. Because that tasteless fish is the kind of fish that we like the best. We, we don't like food that really tastes of anything in this country. We prefer tasteless food. White sliced bread. Uh, stuff like that. <laughs> White sliced bread. You know, fish and chips. Stuff like that. We prefer tasteless food, which is odd that uh, the um, un virtually our national dish after fish and chips is um, an Indian curry, which tastes of fire. So the UK-Norway deal, which was trumpeted in September, 32 million quids worth of seafood is uh, off because of our intransigence, because of all that winning. <laughs> Hey, are you, are, you, are you sick of winning yet, Brexiters? No. No. They've had a gullet full and still not sick of winning. But, you know, Norway, uh, which is not in the EU, says it now wants a three-way deal before it opens up its waters. It wants a three-way deal with us, itself, and the EU, meaning that the Brexit impasse could scupper the earlier agreement. Hey, Brexiters, are you listening to this? Norwegian fishers, mi fisheries minister is called Odd. I'm not making that up. O-D-D, -D, that's his first name. The Norwegian fisheries minister is called Odd. <laughs> Isn't that odd? Odd Emil Ingebrigsten. So they have way too many syllables in their names. They, they could just cut them in half. I mean, you know, conserve. Odd Emil Inga Brixton says, and whenever um, yeah, Norway or, or Iceland, which is even worse, are playing football, I, I feel really sorry for the uh, football commentators. I mean, how do they keep all that stuff in their minds? They must be geniuses. Maybe they could do a trade deal for us. Odd Emil Inga Brixton says, if we do not get a deal by January the 1st, we will not open Norway's economic fishing zones to vessels from the EU and Britain. Norway's part of the European single market and negotiates with the European Union about granting access to their respective waters. You know, they fish over there and um, the, uh, the EU fish in Norwegian waters where all that good cod is and Norway fishes in uh, the EU waters where they've got... I don't know. I don't know. What are you asking me for? What do I know about fish? 
Since Britain's vote to leave the EU, Norway now negotiates directly with us. And <laughs> isn't that going well? No. No. It's almost as though this whole Brexit thing isn't as easy as everybody said it would be. It's almost as though it's complicated. Who could have thunk it? What do you think, Smee? You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. So we don't need Norway fish. All that smelly cod that we hate so much. We'll have patriotic mackerel and herring, which is what lives around these parts. Hands up who wants Her Britannic Majesty's herring and chip supper. Keep your hands up while I count. No one. When we came to an agreement with Norway, the Environment Secretary, George Eustace, which rhymes with useless, I'm just saying that it rhymes with... It is just a fact. It rhymes with useless. He said, The agreement is testament to our commitment to acting as a cooperative, independent coastal state. Yeah, but uh, they aren't cooperating anymore because we decided to leave the EU. So now Norway is having to agree a deal with the EU and us. Not a two-way deal, a three-way deal which is one too many for an easy life. We're in a threesome. Disgusting. And Boris Johnson is still pretending that he cares about fish and the fishing communities that he and the Conservative Party have, up to this point, accidentally failed to show any interest in whatsoever. And to which they now pledge their undying attention because, uh, oh, I don't know, Britannia rules the waves. Some fake patriotic nonsense that pleases the flag wavers. We want to tear up deals that we did with foreign fishing fleets to which we sold our quotas for money and now we want them back and we want to keep the money. That sounds like the way the, the, the Mafia do business. Absolutely. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Hang about, Nick. Listen. Now, hang on. what I'm trying to say to you is this, Nick, right? This text says, 80s music was great. <laughs> well, two things. First, oh, no, it wasn't. And second, what's that got to do with anything? 80s music was rubbish. Any fool know that. It was the worst decade ever, apart from the 90s and the noughties and the 2010s. William texts, the Greens are being very quiet about this fish issue. What with all the conservation challenges involved? Well, what's that got to do with anything as well? <laughs> Two in a row on the Nicky Abbott Show. The Greens are being very quiet about this fish issue. Well, what's anything got to do with the Greens? I mean, does anybody actually remember that the Greens even exist? I know I don't. But thanks for the memories. The, uh, the green is. Groovy. Yeah, they, uh, they're still a thing, apparently. Lucas texts, you really don't like tasteless, tasteful foods. You really don't like tasteful foods. How can prefer chicken breast over delicious and fat chicken legs? How can you, perhaps? How can you prefer chicken breast over delicious and fat chicken legs? Well, because chicken breasts, you could convince yourself that it was never attached to um, a living thing. Right? But there's no way around chicken legs. Poor little chooks. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming and it still made me laugh. Hull, Charles. Hi, Nick. Um, hope you're keeping in fine fettle. Yes. As they say. Do they? Who says? <laughs> um, well, generally. What's fettle? Do you know what? I don't know. And I come from Yorkshire. OK, Google. <laughs> What's fettle mean? This is the definition of fertile. No, not Soil fertile. You, oh, my producing... God. Google's an idiot. It doesn't know anything, Google. <laughs> fertile, not fertile, you moron. Fettle. Anyway, we'll never know. Was that it? <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, re Boris's gunboat diplomacy. Yeah, re. Yeah, you see, when he was nine years old, there was a Cod War, and we sent the Royal Navy in to sort out the Icelandics who didn't like us, uh, you know, fishing in their water. <coughs> I yes. know, I know, I know. 
it didn't work out well. Not you very see, well, no. The Icelandics found out that we would shoot across their bows, but we wouldn't actually put a shell in their ships. Right. Well, don't tell us. So, Spoiler alert. So what happened was that they laughed at us, and they laughed at the Royal Navy, <laughs> because we were paper tigers on the high seas. Right, laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> in Icelandic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was... You know, and also, Hull's fishing industry, it halved in 73, 74, halved again 74, 75, and halved again 75, 76. Have you still got that submarium in Hull? Yes, yes, it's still going. It's the only, it's the only yeah, yeah, piece of I know. water it's, that's it's... got fish in it, apparently. Oh, I thought, I thought you were <laughs> going to tell me it was the world's first submarium. And yes, w- yes. W- which is not really a, a great selling point because nobody has any idea what a submarium is. Exactly. Yeah. Even we don't know. We no. come from here. Have <laughs> you been there? Have you been in it? Yes, I have. Were there any? F- it, were there any? F- fact, listen to me. Good, you can you're, see. You can go down. I'm remotely to interested the, in anything the I'm ocean saying. Area yeah, yeah. Down, down by the seaside, by the seashore. Uh, yeah, I know. Is there any fish in there yet? Um, no. There's a bit. You know, <laughs> a couple you'd of three like fish. to think the odd, odd shark, but um, yeah. Because when I went in there, which was a good long while ago, I, I must admit it was when I was living in Leeds. I took a a, a day out in Hull, which yeah, yeah. I, which I can definitely recommend. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have any fish in there. There was tanks, really? right enough, and the f- tanks had water in, and they had videos of fish, but no <laughs> actual real life fish. <laughs> Which I think is um, an error for a, an aquarium or a submarium, whatever that is. It sounds like the big scandal of Hull. Well, I'll you, get on you can it. say that again, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for the good news. Cheers, Charles. Oh, th- uh, Charles, 0345 6060 973. Right, here comes the uh, information. This is your information station. Affirmative. Fettle, noun, meaning, condition. Use it in a sentence. Marguerite was in fine fettle. Marguerite? Where did that come from? Google. <laughs> That's her. Huh. I mean, of all the names in all the world, they picked Marguerite. M A R G U E R I T E. That's bizarre. Not John or uh, Mary, Marguerite. I mean, that is just willfully perverse. Patrick texts, uh, we the public think the vaccine is a hoax. We still await your genius solution to the COVID-19 problem. Again, what's that got to do with what I'm talking about? But, I, you know, it's not gone away. I just thought we might like, uh, you know, a bit of relief, a bit of light relief <laughs> from, the, from the blooming invisible menace. And so we'll talk about our imminent uh, death at the, uh, at the hands of uh, the French in World War III. You know, just a little chit-chat like that. Milan texts, Harrods contributes more to the UK economy than the fishing sector. Another inconvenient fact leavers will ignore. Well, how many times have I have I said that? Over and over and over again. Exactly how many times have I said that? Four? More. Yeah, the shop. Furthermore, it employs more people than the fishing business in this country. Harrods are the shop. Why were all those kids trying to get into Harrods the other day? I mean, I know this is like a week old news, but there was a crowd of about, um, it looked like about a thousand kids who all wanted to get into Harrods. Kids, you can't afford anything in there. Go to Primark. Let's have um, Beverly, Mike. Hi, Nick. Um, it's just weird that there's. It's just weird. I'm sorry. That there's. It's bizarre that they they've got a place called Beverly. <laughs> Isn't it? What kind of um, a, what kind of a name is that for a place? Well, it was initially thought as being Beaver Lake, but that's been oh. sort of fresh in the local historical um, time. But um, let's yeah, keep it clean. Weird. Yeah, I know. Mm. But anyway, but it's like calling a place Mike or, or I know. John. Yeah, I'll Beverly. Next. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nicole. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, you were talking about Boris trying to get in touch with Macron and um, Merkel. Yeah. 
Um, but did you realise that two days ago, Big Big Pudding Jones had an interview and suggested that Boris should contact Merkel and Macron mm. and, and cut the middlemen out and yet yeah. repeated his claim right. that the German car industry would, like the cavalry, come over the hill mm-hmm. and save us. And then oh my God, we've been being it. told this for four years now and still nothing. And, and he repeated it again that 20% of their sales are in UK, so they couldn't possibly afford. Yeah, right. So it was going without yeah, a Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. We, uh, they need us more than we need them. They're still trotting that old one out. Absolutely. And so Boris um, Johnson tried to uh, put his um, advantage, uh, hope, like push his advantage home, and uh, rang him up, and they said... Hello, number please. Trying to connect you. Sorry to keep you waiting. And then they hung up on him. When will he understand that Europe is united in what they're saying? Yeah. And they aren't going to back off through a few threats here and there by a single country. This is how you negotiate when you're holding all the cards. You refuse to negotiate. You say, you uh, you can't talk to me, you can talk to my people. Absolutely. It's it's like that old line in um, uh, Absolutely Fabulous. Uh, somebody was um, trying to lord it over. Uh, who, what's the main character's name in Absolutely Fabulous? Um, uh, what's that? Eddie. E- Edwina, yeah, that's right. And um, uh, somebody was uh, trying to lord it over Edwina, says, and, uh, and their people can talk to my people, and my people can talk to you. <laughs> Priceless. Well, that's what Boris Johnson's getting right now. No, you you can't talk to the uh, Macron and Merkel, uh, Boris. You've got to talk to their people. He's calling can them I... up in a, a state of advanced desperation. You can see it in his eyes. Can I ask you a quick question, Nick? Well, you have to be quick. Yeah, because I know your psychology background. Have you read Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman? Certainly not. Is it a book? I'll wait till the video comes out. You don't want to sweet-talk your car into starting. Come on, you little beauty. And you don't want to turn the air as blue as your fingers. Come on, you little... You want Halfords. We fit car batteries while you wait from just £15. Let us find it, fix it or fit it at over 750 stores and garages nationwide. Or we'll come to you with our mobile experts. Because if you want to keep moving this winter, you want Halfords. Fitting cost only excludes Northern Ireland. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Thank you for holding. Your call is important to us. <laughs> That's from Boris Johnson uh, got on the phone when he uh, tried to uh, call Merkel up. Thank you for holding. Your call is important to us. And then the line went dead. Phil in Paul texts, how about just fishing in our own ter- territorial waters? Full stop, end of, or am I mad? Uh, well, I'll leave that last part uh, alone. I won't touch that one, no, Phil. But as for fishing in our own territorial waters, full stop, end of, the issue with that is that we don't like the fish that we catch in our own territorial waters, full stop, end of. We sell it to France. Which means that um, sending four Royal Navy vessels out to... Um, to uh, pepper French boats with uh, munitions might not be the best idea. And yet that's what we're going to (laughs) do. It's it's like we're living in a comedy. You know, one of those uh, bad comedies that's not funny. (laughs) Four Royal Navy vessels will be dispatched to Britain's territorial waters if a trade deal is not agreed with the EU. Armed with cannon and machine guns, they'll patrol the English Channel and the Irish Sea to stop illegal fishing. Because who do you think you are kidding, Monsieur Macron, if you think we're on the run? We are the boys who will stop your little game. We are the boys who will make you think again. Oh my God, the flag-waving enthusiasts are going to love this. It's Cod Wars Part 4. You remember the first Cod War and their sequels, Cod Wars 2, 3 and 4? We won every single one of them. Uh, We won the last two? Well, we won the last one and that's what counts. We lost all four of them? Oi. As well as the pride of the naval fleet, Wildcat and Merlin helicopters are also being placed on standby to help with coastal surveillance. Some of them work. And we've got a few pilots, but we couldn't afford the bullets. So we'll just yell at them if they come over here and start nicking our fish. (laughs) 
The fish, by the way, that we'll want to sell to the French because it's mostly mackerel and herring and that stuff's vile. But don't let that make you think that we're just blowing hot air. We've got our eye on you, Johnny Foreigner. It's, it's Trump-like, isn't it? That's exactly what this is. It's Trump-like. Once again, the government are led by the principle, what would Donald Trump do? Donald Trump would call up someone to bully them into taking a deal that they didn't want. And um, if they don't pick up, he'll call out the Navy. Like a bright orange doughy ersatz tough guy. You're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that way. Don't talk to... I'm the president of the United States. Don't ever talk to the president that way. And that's what happened. Our prime minister tried to speak directly to Emmanuel Macron and Angela Merkel. But the French and the German leaders rebuffed his approach. They saw who, was, who, who it was on caller ID and let it go to voicemail. <laughs> that's us holding all the cards. Earlier this week, the EU suggested it would continue to enjoy the same access as it does now for at least another year, even under no deal. But you know what? They've been fishing those waters for about 60 years now. This isn't new. 60 years, pretty much. <clears throat> And they can't just stop overnight, because we're having a flag-waving fit. It's completely unreasonable. But I think being unreasonable is our modus operandi. We are unreasonable, and then we accuse the other side of being unreasonable. It's classic deflection technique. Just, uh, if you are uh, uh, guilty of criminal actions, accuse the other side of criminal actions like Donito Mussolini. Don't be rude. Earlier this week, that's what the EU suggested. And um, we said, uh, you know, we gave it all that. I'm amazed the EU hasn't chucked us out. No matter about us leaving. I'm, amazed, I'm, a, I'm actually stunned, the more I read, that um, we haven't been thrown out for being a bore. But in short, we are not going to war with France. So that lot in uh, Union Jack underwear can take a seat. It's not going off. I mean, if we couldn't beat Iceland, we can't beat France. Hell, if we, if we went to war with Iceland, the supermarket, we'd prob <laughs> probably lose. But, you know, that doesn't the, uh, stop the uh, usual uh, suspects from having a multiple organism. Disgusting. Just at the very idea. The Navy is threatening to deploy two Batch 1 vessels and two Batch 2 vessels which are almost 300 feet in length and weigh 2,000 tonnes. Batch 1 vessels are equipped with 20mm cannons and 7.62mm machine guns, which is about 3 foot 6, in proper British uh, measurements. Um, why are proper British ships being measured in filthy foreign measurements? Hmm? They've also got 30mm um, MK44 Bushmaster cannons, which uh, is my favourite type of Bushmaster cannon. A Navy source says it's highly unlikely you'll get a couple of those at sea on New Year's Day. No, wait, he said it's highly un it's not unlikely, likely. Well, if a Navy source said it's highly likely, then let's assume that it won't happen. They'll start the engine and the battery will be flat. <laughs> But, you know, it doesn't matter because it gave the gammons a thrill bordering on sexual. You know, hurrah, let's kill them all. In other news, our lot have made such a cock-up of the virus that we put 14,000 military personnel on standby to help with the rollout of the coronavirus vaccines. And they'll need uh, to dig people out when the winter kicks in and surprises us all, as it does every single year. And we'll need the military to respond to what's going to happen with a no-deal but they'll have to start opening fire on lorry drivers for peeing in hedges and befouling Kent. God, what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. Oh, and by the way, if it does come to it, the UK Navy has 78 commissioned ships, including one that's a tourist attraction called the HMS Victory. 78 ships, 33,000 regular personnel and 174 aircraft. France, on the other hand, has 36,000 personnel and 180 ships and 178 aircraft, all of which are bigger numbers than ours. 
0345 6060 973 text 84850 email nicka at lbc.co.uk and if you're on Twitter it's at LBC let's have a call in Monmouth hello Mel oh hi Nick Mel um, yes I'm on the border between Wales and England surprisingly ah yes so Wales will probably be going independent soon or whatever hurrah which is, um, who knows but Nick I was just thinking could you just put into a, like one or two sentences why any sh- anyone should have voted to leave? Because I can't get my head around it. Uh, yes, well, I'll give you the sentences that I keep getting thrown at me all the time because we want to... Well, there's the phrase that has gone around on an email and all Tory politicians just keep on... They're, they're, they're on... Um, it's on heavy rotation. We want to take back control of our laws and our money and our... Um, what's the other one? Fish? probably but we have yeah okay so the first two right we have control over you, you don't have to break it down for me i, I know it's no, a, sorry, a load sorry, of old guff i don't i don't know anything but i do know that that's just a, a big uh, basket of nonsense okay so i don't understand it really because we weren't in Sh- we're not we weren't because we're out of out of the eu now hmm. we weren't in Schengen. So we had control over our borders. We could mm. let in whoever we wanted to or not. Correct. Unlike the rest of Europe. Yes. Um, and we had control over all our laws. The European Court of Human Rights has nothing to do with our laws. Yeah, but the, the, it doesn't matter how many times you tell people that, they won't believe you because it's got the word European in it. But am I being stupid or something? Have I missed something? <laughs> Someone's being stupid, Mel. I'm not sure who it is. I could point fingers, but, you know. But I, I just really can't understand it. No, it, it's it, it's nothing nothing to really understand. It, it's not about facts. It's about feelings, baby. <laughs> People feel yeah. that their lives have not gone as well as they wanted them to, which is perfectly reasonable. Because by and large, people do not live a, a fantastic and um, a, a, a brilliant life. We most of us have a very average life. That's why yeah, it's so average. I do, I do too. I have an average life. Yeah, but you're but surrounded by think... pictures and uh, information of people who have fabulous lives, and so it's this like, leads to pe- this leads people to being dissatisfied. So they search but, around to find whose fault it is that they are dissatisfied. I don't, I don't, and you just let me finish the sentence. And usually, um, it is a small, identifiable minority of people who either uh, look different to you, or talk different to you, or uh, worship different to you, or you know, somebody that you can say those people there. But in this case, it's it's much bigger than that. It's much better than that because it comes with uh, all sorts of uh, notions about being um, under the thumb and, uh, and and lacking sovereignty. Sovereignty. You know, we're going to be um, in, in charge of our own direction like a rudderless ship blown about on the seas. No direction home. I just kind of... The sovereignty thing, I just... Uh, I, I can't even go there. It's ridiculous. But um, I don't know. It's just... I wish somebody in sort of like... In sort of like anybody who, who's who got a name in politics could just actually stand up and say, what if you voted against? Why did you want to leave? Hmm. Why? Because of the oh, feeling like, that things sensible. would get better if that's what they did. Because people were told that. People were told that it was sold a bunch of old uh, tripe by people who were not going to suffer the consequences of what's happening. I know that, but it just... I, I, I mean, I think this is all kind of where we are now was we could have predicted. Well, you predicted, I predicted, like, months ago. Yeah. But I, I do think it's quite scary that there are still people who are going, e but no, sorry, it shouldn't be Northern Ireland or anything. <laughs> but you know, we want our sovereignty back. Yeah, we want control of our water. Mm. We want to fish. We want to fish. No, yeah. that, uh, uh, that, and that, I've that, had this conversation that. maybe a thousand times over the last four well, years. People will say not, we want control of our laws because they're controlling our laws, and like I said yesterday, not, my response, my but, response will. You don't have to tell me, Mel. Uh, my response will always be, well, which law specifically? Just I give know. me, just give me one that you object to, and there'll be <laughs> there'll be an echoing silence, and they'll say, all of them, meaning they've got no idea. They're just repeating f- ca- uh, catchphrases that they've heard from uh, their uh, their favourite cult leaders. Ian Mel, I'm going to have to go, but thanks for that. Oh three four five, don't tr- don't overthink it. 
There's nothing to think. It's all about feelings. Do you feel that you're being held back? It doesn't matter whether you are or not, or whether life is just one series of events that either are or are not lucky, which is exactly what life is. It's um, it is the feeling that you're being dragged down, which always works, by the way. Those of evil intent, the, um, the, the people that do actually control the media, which, which are not left wing um, liberals, by the way, it's the opposite of that. The people who actually control the media, it's in their interests to, um, to, to keep you concerned about the people beneath you on the ladder pulling you down but that's not what's happening it's the people above you on the ladder that are pushing you down but you can't tell people this is lbc with nick abbott well let's get back to it uh this anonymous text says brian was complaining about you to clive this morning oh god hey you brian leave that clive alone Graham in Bradford says, Beverly has one of the finest minsters in the country with exquisite wooden carvings in the choir. It's also got uh, interesting antiques centres. Wow, that sounds uh, like a fascinating place. Boring! And Alex in Glasgow says, Rick Astley was in the 80s and he was good. <laughs> I'm not going to have a fight with you about this. The 80s was the worst decade for music in the history of music. <laughs> It's just a fact. Here's a call in uh, Balham, Jürgen. Hello, Nick. How Hello, are you? Jürgen. Um, so, get yeah. phone. Woo! Oh, wow. That was, uh, that was even better than the one I did yesterday. Did I get any on you? Oh, wow. Oh, I'm in ecstasy. Oh. Sorry, Bass. <laughs> Jürgen. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Yes, I am. I'm better than all right, mate. I'm floating. I am. Excellent. Right. The French, quotas, if they own the quotas for our fishing, right? Yeah. Are the Navy going to have them queue up to come in? I mean, how's that going to work? I mean, if there's hundreds of fishing boats and four Navy boats, how are they going to check every boat to see which one can be there and which one can't? You know how large our waters are? Three times oh, the yeah. size of the landmass of the UK. Three times. How are they going to well, How are they going to police that with four boats? Build a wall. I don't know. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. Oh three, four five, six oh six oh nine seven three. Holden tweets: There is a Shirley near Southampton. Well, what's she doing there? Loitering, I expect. Disgusting. You want to watch that, Holden? Bring the neighbourhood down. Steve says fettle comes from stoke, as it's a term for finishing off pottery in production. Huh. The stuff you learn on this show. It's like an education, ain't it? No. Here is uh, Slough. Ugh. Hello, Christine. What, uh, uh, Slough? <laughs> what you get, uh, that's where I live. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a word for shedding skin, isn't it? You slough your skin off. Imagine calling a place that. I know, I agree with you. <laughs> but but I still live here. Right. <laughs> and it's not... Uh, well, that's very brave of it. you. Well, actually, I live in Datchet, not Slough. But right, slough well, you don't want to say goes. Slough. You don't say Datchet. All right, then. <laughs> um, but uh, the postcode's uh, uh, Slough, and a lot of snobs say, oh, no, we, we live in we live in Datchet, Datchet, actually, yeah. Right. So I was just thinking, um, now that we know exactly what Brexit means, and it's, it's nothing to do with sovereignty, it's nothing to do with uh, getting our borders back, uh, it's, a, it's a big lie that Johnson won the, the, the referendum and, and the vote on, mm. an absolute pack of lies to the, to the country, he ought to be ashamed of himself. And we should have another referendum now that oh, we know God. what we're going to have. No, I can't we're stand it. We're going to be deep poverty. And I think we, we I think we'll probably ask Reese Mock to ask his nanny who's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all of the people that He's have gifted quiet, this isn't he, these days. Yeah, all of the people that have gifted us this situation will not be affected by the consequences. They'll be doing just fine. In fact, a lot of them will be doing better than fine. Like yes. like the, when the referendum came about, isn't it co a coincidence that a lot of people who were putting money towards the campaign to get us out of the EU were also betting on 
that yes. circumstance doing uh, ha damage to the economy, and they made a boatload of money. That's right. How about getting that back from them? Yeah. You know, using the country, uh, uh, its country's uh, economic and political um, stance to get to make money out of the poor. See, so I think be that's fine, but we'll be starving. Exactly. We won't have Quite right. I think that's traitorous behaviour. I mean, it's it it's profiteering. Well, profiteering in a bad way against the people. <laughs> not way. profiteering <laughs> for, you know, it's not profiteering against the no. tax man. It's not profiteering um, at the, on the blood of, of, of the people of this country and yeah. lying to them. Yeah. And because he, he won the vote on a big, big lie and he's been caught with his pants down now, he should now say, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, you hold your breath, uh, Christine. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. We won't hear him say this. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed. I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I'm sorry. Plus, I think he's the clown at the front. He's not the architect of this. He he's just the uh, the, the distraction at the front, waving his arms around and uh, and trying to be amusing. Well, the actual uh, uh, machinations are cranking away in the background. The people who have gifted this to us, they don't even live here anymore. Those exactly. that did live here have scarpered to tax havens abroad. Yes, like Singapore. Uh, yeah, places like Singapore, precisely right. Mm. And, and those who haven't scarpered never lived here in the first place. Exactly. So the people have to wake up and not keep on... I don't know why the media and the people are just sort of saying, oh, well, we'll have to wait and see what, what the next thing and what's coming along. I'll tell and you why. And then we get things like people saying, oh, we're going to have our gunboats. For, right. for, I'll tell for you why, fishing. Christine. I'll tell you why. Money. It's all about the money, honey. While we all suffer, the pound has dropped a quarter since before the re referendum, both against the EU, the EU euro and the American dollar. A quarter it's dropped. I don't know how he's got the barefaced light to stand there and say, oh, we'll be all right because, you know, um, um, we'll, have to do, we'll have to leave hmm. without a deal. Maybe he's <laughs> uh, using the royal we. He'll be all right. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, it's the rest of us that are screwed. We used to actually storm the House of Parliament, you know, like the, like the, like the French did the Bastille, and wake the, <laughs> like the peasants did the Bastille, to make the, the aristocratic uh, French realise that, you know, they'd ha we've, had we've had enough. Yeah, I think we but should storm the Houses of Parliament to avail ourselves of uh, all of that uh, subsidised uh, drink and, and food. Booze. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, booze. Yeah. All right. What's her name? Would say your partner. What's her name again? Carol McGiffin. Carol oh McGiffin right, says, yeah. I yeah. love that. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Christine. Carol and I do a podcast which is called "What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol." Oh right, yeah. In which we try to solve people's problems, and we have um, a lot of fun doing that. We we laugh and we laugh and we laugh. And if you wish to be amused, I think you'll love it. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol. If you want us to solve your problems, send it to nickandcarol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? And prepare to be completely satisfied. You know how you get a little buzz when you spend money? Well, saving money can give you a little buzz too. And you can save money in so many ways with the NatWest app. Skip the mocha, frother, frapper, cappuccino once in a while. Sell something you haven't used for ages and that's just taking up space to someone who would really love it. And just putting aside a little every day is easy with the NatWest app. And it can be quite addictive. Because the things you can get with the money you've saved can be big like a new bike, or a holiday, or a trip to the garden centre to clean the place out and turn your backyard into an oasis for next summer. You can start looking after the pennies and save with the NatWest app. With just a click, you could start a new fund, save a little here and there, and pretty soon you're on your way to sitting on that two-wheeler, or lying back on a lounger by the hotel pool, or plucking a lemon from your very own lemon tree. Looking after the pennies is so much easier when you set yourself a savings goal in the NatWest app. Search NatWest app. Eligible savings account required. App criteria apply. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. I'd like to punch him in the face.
they opened their big mouths and out came talk. Talk, talk. Maria in Balham says, how about not fishing anywhere and leaving the fish to live in peace? Yes, Maria, that's right. I mean, fish are people too, you know. Robert texts, Nick, does every, quotes, sovereign state not, does every sovereign state, not a member of a common fisheries arrangement, have gunboats out patrolling their waters? Is our government overreacting, or is this purely for the benefit of the dingalings? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, we, we, got, we got our own dingalings. Yeah. In fact, in fact, Chuck Berry needs to start singing that song straight away. I haven't heard that in, oh my God, it must be 30 years. He used to do that on um, on television in the evening. My ding-a-ling, he was uh, singing. Disgusting. Can you believe that? That's what passed for family entertainment in the bad old days. A bloke on TV talking about his ding-a-ling. <laughs> singing about it yet. This text says, uh, Nick, our Navy, Army and Air Force are there to defend this nation. Going by you, we are alone in the world with no friends. So why shouldn't we be sending out our forces to protect us? You would probably like us all to roll up in a ball and plead for forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, Because there is no alternative between uh, picking a fight with uh, our, the, our closest trading partner and rolling into a, into a ball and pleading for forgiveness. Those are your only options. The whole world's gone insane. Here is Seaford, East Sussex. Hello, John. Good evening, Nick. I was just uh, listening to you a little while back about you were talking about EU laws. And I just happened to look up the actual legislation here. And it, it, I'm not sure you're actually cr absolutely correct about it. It says here, as a member of the European Union, Section 2 of the European Communities Act 1972 made provision for EU legislation to become law in the UK. The EU legislation was directly applicable to the UK, which meant that it applied automatically in UK law without any action required by the UK. So that does kind of suggest that uh, EU law could override our law by being automatically applied. Is that not what you were saying? Uh, no, it is not what I was saying. Right, but that is the case then. So EU law was well, automatically... But, it, but it's, automatically not, it's not the applied. end of the case, though, is it? We can apply whatever laws we uh, decide. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure, John. Uh, right. Sure, Nick. But the, the thing is, at the end of the day, it, it states quite clearly under the legislation... Doc, uh, doc yeah, 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 1973. Right. 90, well, this is the European Act of Communities Act, 1972. 1972. Right, two. Yeah, Section 2 of the European mm. Communities Act, 1972. Are you just going to repeat what you just said? Well, no, because you said 1973, that was all. So I was just... Well, it, I thought that's what it, you said. It doesn't really make any difference. 72, 73, it's uh, ancient yeah, it history. Does, it does say automatically applied, you see? That's right, what I'm saying. But, yeah. but then we can do whatever we want, though. We, we can uh, allow people in as we choose, and we can... Uh, it's like, it's, well, that, it's yeah, like they just said, that, if, uh, we, if it, we hadn't been for Brexit, then we wouldn't have been able to get the vaccines out so quick, which was, which was another bare-faced lie. It had nothing to do with the European Union. We could do anything we blooming well liked concerning a vaccine in a pandemic. <laughs> Hang on, Nick. Do I get a chance to speak here or not? <laughs> I thought you had. <laughs> well, you didn't give me much of a chance, did you? All I was trying to point out to you was that the EU can apply laws to Are you to going to repeat UK yourself automatic? again? Well, because you're just going off on a tangent again, aren't you? I'm just No, it's not a, ta it's not a you, tangent. You said, it's it's another you, example of what it is you're talking about. You're saying uh, you're making the point that uh, in your um, eyes, the European Union has complete control over us. And I'm saying that's utter hogwash, and they've been trying to persuade us that that's the case for the last four years. Whereas the people that are saying this either, A, don't know that they're lying, which is alarming, or know that they're lying. Those are the only two options. Either they're incompetent or they shouldn't be in power. Those are the only two options we've got. And they both add up to they shouldn't be in power. Do you really think that you had to go back to 1972, John? That's weak. As though nothing has happened since then. Uh, this says, gunboats in the channel to confront French fishermen. This is what it's come down to. The right-wing tabloids will love it, of course. You bet they will. That's what sells papers. War. <sighs> what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Gunboats in the channel to confront French fishermen. This is what it's come down to. The right-wing tabloids will love it, of course. Meanwhile, we commit a degree of economic self-harm that is incalculable and become an international laughing stop. <laughs> Step forward and take a bow, the two Bullingdon boys. Yes, take a bow, boys. You've done very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Out of it. They're not going to suffer the consequences. All of the people that have gifted this to us, to the nation, will not suffer the consequences of their actions. They won't. We will. They won't. 0345 6060 973. Is he still hanging on? Are you still there, John? Well, you didn't give me much of a chance. Oh, my God. You just kept repeat, repeating the same thing. Well, you, you, you don't give the person any chances, Nick. You just I gave you, and I, and no, I gave you three chances, and you just said the same thing three times. Is there, well, any, well, is there anything well, else you would you like to that. say? Well, only that I think you tend to override all your... Oh, OK, so it's just like a complaint. OK, put your general complaints on a postcard. Oh, I'm doing a show here. This is not a complaints forum. 0345 6060 973. Yeah, that's what we want. Three hours of that guy. Did you know that in 1972, in section three, subparagraph four, Bethnal Green. Hello, Harry. Hello, is that you, Nick? No. All right, it's me then. Okay. Yeah, you know, one of your callers, a woman, she said uh, she didn't know why we, we voted to leave in the first place. She wanted to know if anybody knew. Well... It's all over immigration, wasn't it? Because Nigel Farage, UKIP party, came on the scene and it was all about immigration. Too many people were coming in from Europe. So the government got worried about it, Cameron, and he sent out leaflets, didn't he? Uh, and that's what it is all about, uh, immigration. Yeah. That's what it, But you, you said to her, you, you, you didn't seem to know. You were saying about... There was nothing... When they sent the pam pamphlets out, in, Cameron sent them out... Mm. Um, there was nothing in it about uh, level playing fields, fishing, anything like that. No, it was, all, that. All, it was all to do with uh, he, he, he was trying to persuade people to remain, saying that we uh, we were the only country in the EU and he, and he we, who's got control of our own borders. That was a lie, anyway, wasn't it? But he made it a double-sided question because people think, oh, what he meant was immigration from outside Europe. So you, you didn't seem to know. But, Harry, if you say that out loud, as you just have done, you will get a tsunami of complaints with, of people who voted to leave who say it didn't have anything to do with immigration. Well, I'm, they don't have my address anyway, do they? <laughs> I, 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 I haven't got an email address. I've got an, I, I've got an iPad. Right, well, <laughs> get, get you with your uh, fancy computer device. He's, he's called Harry, and he lives in Bethnal Green. They'll find you, Harry. Don't you worry about that. Yeah. No, they'll be furious. About immigration? Of course it's not. It had nothing to do with uh, UKIP. The arguments that UKIP stands for aren't valid. It was about uh, some uh, old nonsense about taking back control, as though we didn't have control. It has gotten totally out of control. As though we didn't have control of uh, the way that this country is going. Now, of course, we don't have control. This is the um, this is how ironic it is. The argument was that we would take back control, but we have no control now. We're going to be bobbing about on the ocean wave, a rudderless ship being blown about by countries that are in enormous trading blocks. The entire world is deciding which gang it wants to be in. And all of the major economies are in gangs now. And the ones that aren't are furiously scrambling to try to find a gang to be in. We're going to be Johnny No Mates in the school playground getting picked on by people who are in gangs. People smaller than us individually will uh, be able to boss us around in gangs. The whole world is organising itself into trading blocks. It's doing this because it makes life easier for people to trade and it makes countries richer by doing it. Only one country in the world is going in the opposite direction. Only one country on earth thinks that a better future is to bob about on the sea shouting at foreigners that they should do what we say. It's, it seems like all of our eggs were in Donald Trump's basket. We expected that he would give us a huge and tremendous trade deal because he was put in place by 
Coincidentally, the same people that gave us Brexit. The same few billionaires. The same few faces, they crop up all the time over Trump and Brexit. It's not a, a Boris Johnson who's the architect. He's just the clown at the front waving his arms around to distract us from what's, what's actually going on here. It's like a coup. And we uh, could have got a trade deal with the screaming Mimi in America, except uh, he wasn't interested in anything other than himself. So we were last on his list. You know, everybody was freaking out about uh, uh, about Obakarama. You, you remember Obakarama, don't you? Oh. Yeah, that's right. He said something of the order of we would be uh, at the back of the queue. Well, with Donald Trump, everybody is at the back of the queue. Unless they can give something to Donald Trump, which usually amounts to, uh, you know, the folding stuff. So we could have got a deal with him, except he wasn't interested in uh, doing a deal with uh, anybody uh, that would not uh, benefit himself personally immediately. So we, we were last on his list. So we got nothing. He had four years to do as a deal. And he passed, much to the increasing panic of this government, who were relying on that. A huge trade deal with America. And now the wheels have really come off and suddenly there's going to be a reasonable, sane man in the White House. And he won't do deals that are designed to enrich himself. He's not a con man, like Fat Donny. <laughs> Ain't that right, Donito? Don't be rude. And uh, the best deal for America is obviously with the European Union, because that's where the money is. This special relationship that we kid on uh, ourselves, that uh, we uh, enjoy with America, it doesn't exist. I mean, as though they don't talk to other countries. There's no such thing, special relationship, my eye. They have a special relationship with the European Union because the US and the EU do trade to the tune of about $1.1 trillion a year. Trillion. That's a number that's so big, I don't even know what it is. The US and the UK do trade of about $273 billion a year. And, fact fans... 1.1 trillion is a lot bigger number than 273 billion. I mean, which would you prioritise? So we're leaving the EU because of some old guff about taking back control, which was to cover up the, uh, the actual it of it, which, as uh, Harry just said, was about immigration. But, I mean, what control does anybody really think that we will wield in the face of all of these enormous trading blocks? Well, what power will we have trying to tell the EU what to do, for instance. I mean, how's that going? Oh, fabulous. I mean, there's these trading blocks that are cropping up all over, and they're defined by proximity. I mean, they're all combining countries that are natural trading partners with, e with each other because of how close they are. And the EU was the world's biggest trading block until, after eight years of negotiations, it was supplanted by RCEP, which is... The first time I've actually said that out loud, which sounds borderline rude. RCEP, R-C-E-P, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, 10 Southeast Asian countries, plus South Korea, China, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. It makes up pretty much a third of the world's population. They account for 29% of global gross domestic product. How do you think that we will uh, shout at them to do what we want? And then there's the North America Free Trade Agreement. Canada, Mexico, the United States, the world's largest economy. How much heft do you think we will have negotiating with that lot? And there's Mercosur. Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, Venezuela, all close together on a map. You could throw a blanket over the lot of them. And there's the Association of South East Asian nations, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, Brunei, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia. If they were any closer together, it would be an orgy. Disgusting. And as far as I can tell, all of the major economies in the world, only India is not in a free trade bloc. Maybe we could join up with India. I mean, after all, they're only 4,700 miles away. We could cut uh, the tariffs on the entire lot of the trade that we do with India, which amounts to £8 billion, and it wouldn't amount to a hill of beans. 
You know, we've had 14 separate trade committees with India. Don't ask me how long it took. Blooming ages. And in all that time, they've managed to do a, a deal that has amounted to a boosting the economy of this country by £250 million a year. <laughs> £250 million a year. That's what we got out of all that. It's about as much as the Tories gave to a financial advisor for face masks. You know, a person with no previous experience, but, weirdly, a close connection to the Tory party. 250 million quid. That'll buy you some gowns that aren't up to the job. A 250 million pound boost to the economy, courtesy of looser trade with India. Great, we could put up a cycle lane down your high street with that kind of money. But they do have a lot of tea. So there's that. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. This is absolute tosh. This says, <laughs> this, uh, don't uh, sit on the fence, uh, Uncle Nige. Tell us what you think. This says, I don't understand why they've sent out war boats. I guess fishing techniques have changed. Yeah, that's right. If those fish even think about swimming away from our waters into uh, filthy French foreign waters, we'll kill them. It's the only kind of language these fish understand. Chester. Hello, Chris. Hi, uh, Nick. bit nervous because it's the first time I've ever phoned up a radio station. Yeah, I'm nervous there. too. It's absolutely <laughs> terrifying, isn't it? Anyway, anyway, that guy that phoned up a couple of things, going on about quoting his uh, things about the EU, we had a veto. I'm sick of listening to people who don't know what they're talking about. We had a veto, Nick, didn't we? We didn't have to accept any law that we... We were not happy with, you know. Yeah, we, we had, uh, like I said before, I'm amazed that the EU didn't chuck us out. <laughs> yeah. we, we've been very bad members. I lived in Germany for 10 years. My daughter's German. I mean, I love Europe. I, I feel absolutely ashamed of the, this behaviour, you know. But uh, I was looking at something online this morning, this guy, and he was saying apparently um he made a complete ass of himself oh sorry uh old uh, boris he walked into that meeting yeah uh, it sounds with, like uh, him yeah <laughs> with ursula he said i can't prove this but the whispers are coming out he said basically he insulted barnier behind his back he said it made a joke about him being french and she just gave him a stern look and mm. said uh, have you got any new proposals prime minister and um, and yeah and he it. said yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, 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 wait. yeah. yeah. And the rest of the meal went uh, badly, you know, along in a in a uh, embarrassed silence. Yes. I mean, he's a disaster. He's an absolute. He can't even tie his tile properly. Well, that's uh, part of his uh, carefully <laughs> um, honed <laughs> image. That, that that's not an accident. That's his image, which he um, uh, protects. Even at the cenotaph, you know, yeah. the um, uh, on the eleventh, uh, the uh, yeah. remembrance Sunday. Even then, he did not put a comb through his hair because his image is that important to him. Well, apparently, he was drunk and he put the <laughs> wreath upside down, didn't he? Apparently well, so. I don't know and about the that. BBC, and the BBC flicked it to another year or they edited it out or something. Well, that sounds <laughs> like tinfoil hat conspiracy theory nonsense. Drunk, you say? Booze. Huh. <laughs> well, you know, hungover. But, you know, he looked a bit worse for wear. Well, he always looks like worse for wear. There was a picture of him with um, Barnier and um, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. Yes. And um, he was standing there. He looked like oh, he just slept in a skip. God, it was embarrassing. Uh, uh, Benny Hill. Sport. Benny Hill was trending on Twitter because that's <laughs> who he looked like. All he's good for. I don't know if you ever read Marina Hyde in uh, Guardian. Yes, she's absolutely. And John Grace. There, and there's yourself and and uh, what's his name? Uh, James O'Brien. <laughs> yes, and they're the, they're the only people that keep me sane through this uh, right. nonsense. And uh, apparently, you know, it's just all he's good for is giving after dinner speeches to drunken right wing businessmen. That's about it. He keeps coming it. out with these dopey jokes. It's excruciating. My toes have curled up like I'm wearing Aladdin's slippers. Anyway, before I leave, uh, Nick, because I know you've got... Oh, uh, very busy, yeah. To cheer me, to cheer, to cheer, me, cheer you up, I read something online uh, and I had to laugh. They were all taking the mickey out of Boris's uh, appearance. It was a Guardian thing in the comment. And this guy said, if my dog had a face like Boris Johnson, I'd shave his backside. Oh, and oh, go oh, 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 okay. <laughs> 
Just in time. Disgusting. Okay, phew. Boy, am I on the ball today, eh? Yes. Thanks a lot, Chris. 0345 6060 973. Shave is what now? Mark says you could get a financial expert on, an expert of anything, and the cult cultist Brexiters will call and tell you you need to believe more. If only everyone believed together, we could all fly to the moon. Oh. Yeah, it's my uh, unpatriotic, traitorous non-belief that's the issue. <laughs> yeah. oh. I mean, it is a little bit sad. It, if it was, if it was just in inverted commas Brexit then it would be bad enough. But it's just Brexit and the catastrophic clown show that has been our reaction to the invisible menace. The virus. Both at the same time, I don't know that we can actually survive this. It's not going to be pretty. You know, people think that 2020 is uh, has been bad. You wait till 2021. Oh, no. The ramifications of everything that's happened in 2020 will be felt next year. Just because the, de the date clicks over doesn't mean anything. It, it's, nothing's going to change. It's odd, isn't it, that we, that we feel it will, that somehow, just because that's the way we've organised our calendar, that things are going to be completely different. We'll step through the portal into next year and we can slough off this slough again. Slough off 2020 as though it didn't exist. We'll put, we'll put on a new set of clothes and um, it'll be a bright new future. It's just a point in space. I mean, think of it as um, a, just a line that we're hurtling towards, and it's getting closer and closer. I mean, we've still got a, a way to go, but at this speed, we'll be there before you know it. We're spinning and hurtling through space at the same time. Blimey, it's, it's, it's amazing we don't all fly off. <coughs> and the reason we don't fly off is, as any scientist will tell you, because of magnets. <coughs> That's why we don't fly off into space. Magnets. Did you know that? It's a fact. And even if it's not true, it doesn't prevent it from being a fact. Joan in Putney texts, The best description I ever heard of Boris was that he looks like he's brushed his hair with a wet lollipop. <laughs> yeah, that he then put back in his mouth. Yes. Uh, this says, we are not trying to control the EU. They do what they want. All we are doing is saying we're now controlling ourselves. That's all. Yes, that's the fantasy. But as I've previously explained, that is not the reality. We will not be controlling ourselves. We will essentially be doing whatever these giant world trading blocks want us to do. Because they have all the power. And we now... Uh, on uh, exit from the biggest, what was the biggest trading block in the world, which has only just been supplanted, we will be, um, I mean, what power do you think we'll have in the face of uh, all of that, all, all of those people and all of that money? With zero power. It's amazing. We're, we were on top of the heap and we've uh, organised to go down. It's like um, snakes and ladders. We've been climbing the ladder and climbing the ladder and climbing the ladder, and we're going up and up and up and up and up. And uh, as a, uh, a decision of national self-harm, we thought, hey, I wonder what it's like down this big snake. And now we're all the way down, uh, back down the bottom again, but we're still trying to yell as loudly as we did before. It's just that this time, nobody's listening. They're not even taking our call. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Wait, 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 wait. It seems like we've been waiting for uh, a dog's age. Waiting and doing nothing in expectation of everything to work out just fine. I think that's been the case with business. It's been the case with government as well. Even though they are supposed to be the ones that are aware of what, what's happening around here. I mean, nobody's really prepared because people just can't believe that they're in a slow motion car wreck. They think that uh, we'll, we'll pull away from the curb just in time to avoid disaster. I, I mean, I half expect that to happen. I will be kind of surprised if I'm sitting here this time tomorrow and we've uh, just been delivered the news that, right, that's it, it's no deal. Wouldn't you? I am expecting 
that uh, Boris Johnson will say, finally, the EU have capitulated to, to our demands. And the EU will have done no such thing, but that's going to be the way that he's going to try and sell it to us. We win! Hurrah! And then he'll just, you know, do his usual routine of saying something in Latin and talking about Greek gods, you know, shoving his uh, Etonian education down our throats. Yeah, we know you went there, Boris. But I, I'm, that's what I'm expecting. Some sort of triumphalist flag-waving nonsense to suggest that the EU have given in to the to mighty Britannia. Whereas no such thing will have happened. But it, they will have, you know, I mean, look at Ursula von der Leyen and uh, look at Boris Johnson. Which would you uh, task with running a country or a company or a bath? Exactly. I think she's she's looking at uh, uh, Boris Johnson as a parent would uh, a toddler who's thrown itself to the floor in a supermarket and is screaming because mummy won't buy a chocolate covered uh, sugar bomb. <coughs> and mummy will say, "Oh, all right then." <laughs> that's I think that's where we're at. How about this though? Just on the news just now, the number of UK customs officials has been boosted by 16. Oh, fabulous. One six. 16. This is despite the fact that uh, ministers back in 2018 pledged to recruit more than uh, between 3,000 and 5,000 extra customs officials to cope with, uh, you know, everything that's going on here. Either whether we get a deal or no deal. They determined that we needed between 3,000 and 5,000 more customs officials, and we've hired, in two years, 16 of them. God. Uh, the Prime Minister apparently chaired a, a meeting on a Friday afternoon to take stock of no-deal plans. Uh, you know uh, uh, M Michael Gove, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, that's him. Cabinet Office uh, Minister Michael Gove was there. He's been in charge of Brexit preparations. How are they going, by the way? Dreadful. <laughs> 16 more customs officials. So if you're thinking of going in or out or trading at a port, I'd start queuing now for delivery in spring. Let's have... Um, where's this one at? Durham. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Nick. Elizabeth. Nick. I just wanted to say something different to everything else because you've done a wonderful phrase of everything that's been going on and I'm very, very sad oh. and have been for years now, four and a half years of this. But I heard this morning that Marine Le Pen, who heads the right, right, right type yeah. party, she has not, and she's advocated that they leave Europe. She's dropped that idea now, apparently, today. Really? Yeah. And I just thought... Brexit's done a lot for her, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's, it's done a lot for her, and it's done a lot for uh, her um, compatriots in this <laughs> country. We've got a few idiots in our party. Not mentioning any names. <laughs> And I read a little clip about you talking about, about Vanderline. Someone said, well, she's a gynaecologist, so she took a one look at Boris uh -oh. Johnson, uh -oh. and she knew exactly what it was. <laughs> There's nothing else I can say to you tonight. You've covered it all. All right. Thanks a lot, you've, Elizabeth. You've covered it all. It's wonderful. All right. Cheers, my dear. Uh, this show is teetering on the edge of uh, being um, being bleeped. Disgusting. Keep it clean. Mark says, and I've read that. Uh, read that one. That one. We're, we're not trying to control anybody. Else. We're just trying to control ourselves. We want control of our borders and our fish. We just want Brexit. <laughs> I think that woman that said she's. I think she summed up the feeling of the nation. We just want Brexit. Actually means. Oh, can this please be over and we start talking about something else? Well, the reason I'm talking about it is because I thought I'd take a weekend off from talking about the invisible menace. But you know that hasn't gone away. Are we in tier three yet? What tier are we in? Two, I think. What does that mean? Uh, Behaviour. Yeah, uh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, precisely right. Um. Yeah, what does that mean? It means, um, 
I don't know, something about bubbles. This text says, Nick, it's actually Germany and France who are top of the heap in Europe. Yeah, well, it is now the undisputed champions of Europe. And Britain, it says, is going to level the status quo. Status quo. Whatever you want. Uh, uh, uh. Rock and roll! Whatever you want, we can't get. Their new hit. Anyway, what, what's he going on about? It's, it's actually Germany and France who are top of the heap in Europe. And Britain is going to level the status quo. What does that mean? Well, read on, you idiot, and he might explain. Britain has now the ability to enter other world's trading blocks with mutually agreed terms. Yes, but we'll be uh, we'll be agreeing terms with a, with a trading block. In other words, we will not hold all the cards. We will be at their mercy. Which was one of the big problems about doing a, a, a trade deal. I mean, thank goodness we didn't actually get around to doing a trade deal with Donito Mussolini, you know, the uh, screaming Mimi. Because it wouldn't have been uh, good. He's not a nice person. Donald Trump is not a nice person. See, even he would admit that. He's a con man and a crook. Don't be rude. And the only deal that he thinks is a good deal is, that, is one in which he wins and, crucially, everybody else loses. And that's not me saying that. That's him saying that. He said it. So it's a good job that we didn't do a deal while uh, he was uh, you know, still in a position to throw his weight around because we'd have been screwed. What just happened there? The whole page just disappeared. Oh, what's this? Merkel wants Britain to crawl across broken glass is the headline in tomorrow's mail. <laughs> uh, I, I, and I get the feeling that the, the offshore billionaire press barons think just one more push and we'll get this Brexit over the line. On deadline day for Brexit talks, chances of failure put at 80%. Failure? I, th I think you mean victory, don't you? It says Boris takes control of no deal planning and as UK Insider tells MOS. MOS? W w we're doing a deal with the Ministry of Sound now? What have they got to do with it? Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Oh, hello. Hello. I, th I, there was some more on that text. I was remiss in not reading all of it. So here it is from the start. It's actually Germany and France who are top of the heap in Europe. And Britain is going to level the status quo. That still doesn't make sense. Britain has now the ability to enter other world trading blocks with mutually, in capital letters, agreed terms. Well, yeah, I'll restate my case. that The agreed terms will be to our disadvantage because we've got no power compared to the trading blocks that we're going to be trying to negotiate a deal with. I mean, we could pick one country off uh, because we have bigger uh, economies than most countries in the world. But once those economies get together in a gang, then our advantage disappears on the wind like a bad smell. Anyway, it says, get with the program. <laughs> what? If the London Stock Exchange crashes, then that would resonate right across the world in their stock markets. Even a numpty should understand that. Well, yeah, of course it would. But we need them more than they need us. It would resonate on in this country a lot bigger than it would resonate in their countries. Even a numpty should understand that. Berlin, Adrian. Good evening. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, no, I'm still laughing about the gynecologist joke oh. from before. <laughs> <Just> Awful. <laughs> uh, hi, Nick. Uh, I was just saying, your succinct description of Brexit is something which I haven't heard before. Um, the concept of different gangs and billionaires involved in both America and, and the UK. Um, it's like a schoolyard. Everybody's picking a gang. And uh, and if you're left on your own, what well, it's actually like a um, sort of... Uh, um, what's that game of the chairs? Musical chairs. Yeah, we're, we're left without a chair. Do you have musical chairs in Germany? Yes, yes. Uh, they call it something else. Um, yeah. so, something in German, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> the game which children play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, uh, it, it's a strange time. We do not understand really why why the English are doing this. Um, uh, to understand and the, the mindset is quite hard. Well, it's it's yes, and 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 it continues to be difficult to understand because we refuse to uh, uh, to get that it has already cost us dearly. Because yes, because people's lives are more or less the same, they don't understand that the pound has actually decreased in value by twenty five percent since this started. I may ask your opinion: If Donald Trump had won in November, mm. do you think Boris would have a better um, gamble? At- I think that the gamble was that Trump was going to win. Yeah, yes. and they didn't want to contemplate him not winning because then one of the wheels would have come off the sharabang. Yeah, it is, it is quite. It is no. I'm just saying how strange it is. <laughs> the uh, the concept of COVID came around, and COVID was probably one of the mm. big contributors to Donald Trump's loss. Yeah, it, it is strange, isn't it? That um, the thing yeah. that has um, been that has caused this year to be the worst in history has might actually have saved us from. Wow, can you imagine what another four years of Trump would have been like? The world works in strange ways. Yeah, it uh, certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your show. Your show is All right. incredibly entertaining. Thanks a lot, Adrian. <laughs> Cheers, mate. 0345 6060 973. Yeah, another four years of uh, Donito Mussolini. I'll bring us into war. I would have expected him to do just that. I'm amazed that we weren't in World War Three already. That he lost. I thought that the only thing that he can do that he's got left is to start World War Three to declare a national emergency and so the uh, the, the election is off. <laughs> I bet he just can't believe it. He put those uh, cultists on the Supreme Court, two of them, thinking that this is his get-out-of-jail-free card, which is why he kept saying, well, we're gonna, it's going to go to the Supreme Court, all of those things that um, he put up, all of those <laughs> all the demented legal arguments from the uh, from the, the the lawyers from Crazy Town, it was like the Adams family's legal team. All that stuff they were coming out with the Kraken were going to um, uh, you know deliver the this uh, the, the most devastating legal arguments in history, and, and the courts were just flicking them away like it was the silliest thing they ever heard. And so Trump was going, oh, we're going to take it to the Supreme Court, like uh, he was going to automatically win if he just puts anything be- in, uh, before the people that he gave a job to. Well, guess what, Donny? You lose. They're not as... I'm, like, I'm kind of surprised that they said no, the people in the on the Supreme Court, because they're mostly Republican now, and they're mostly um, uh, that, uh, you know, like extreme uh, religious types. And the evangelicals love Donald Trump, which does indicate to me that they're not actually religious at all. They're part of a cult. Because the, 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 what uh, evangelicals come out with is not what Jesus... I mean, I don't know nothing about religion, but I know that Jesus wouldn't be on their side. Oh. He's going to stick them all on his to smite list, I bet you. But yeah, and so and so the, his uh, they call it in America a hail mary pass, where as the clock's ticking down to zero and you're on the losing side, you just chuck the ball to whoever may be in the end zone. God, American football is so dull. How can anybody watch that? But that's what they call it. it basically, it's just a, a chuck and hope. And he and he lost. And he's been complaining about it ever since. I am the most fabulous whiner. I, I, and I'm a whiner, and I keep whining and whining. Over and over and over again. God, it's excruciating. <laughs> In short, for Donald Trump. The American dream is dead. Mark text, we should boycott the EU from now on. Oh, for crying out loud. I will be having battered sovereignty and... Ch- oh, OK, it's sarcastic. I will be having battered sovereignty and chips with a good dollop of English mustard and a cup of lock water. Carry on Britannia, says Mark. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, if there was a poster and uh, Boris Johnson was doing his Benny Hill impression on the front and the, and the title of the film was Carry on Britannia, you think, well, maybe I'll give that a go. That looks funny. Funny to watch, but uh, to be in, 
not so far. It's a little bit dull, but may maybe it'll be all over tomorrow. All over by the, uh, the shouting and the screaming. Yeah, but I doubt it. Either we're going to get a deal tomorrow and Boris Johnson is going to pretend that uh, the EU have uh, cravenly capitulated to our demands. We win. Ha ha, we did have all the cars. Poor, you know, give us all that. Either that will happen tomorrow because the EU have just said, oh God, you know, uh, just have something. We'll go along with uh, your uh, triumphalism. We won't embarrass you in public. But uh, let's just get it done for the benefit of all of us, because otherwise we're all going to lose. Uh, if, it, if tomorrow goes around and, and they actually say, right, that's it, it's over, we, we're going out with no deal, I will actually be amazed. Won't you? But it's going to happen tomorrow. Or the absolute worst thing that could happen is they'll say, well... Let's carry on negotiations. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Please make it stop. I can't stand it anymore. Not that I'm complaining. Stop whining. You know me. I never complain. Whinging and whining and moaning. <laughs> 0345 Are you on strike? Put some more stuff. There must be billions of texts and tweets. I think he's in there um, playing video games. Worcester. Hello, Dave. Uh, good evening, Nick. Dave. Uh, the the union. The union of what? Well, it was set up to stop um, uh, the uh, stop wars initially because capitalism can't help itself, competing nations and all the rest of it. God knows we had two world wars in the last century. But the... Uh, because of, because of capitalism. Well, I mean, competing um, vile imperial nations that led to world wars. Yes, I mean it's a complex issue. But the yeah, the but it's, it's a complex issue. You just mischaracterised it. wasn't for, It wasn't because of capitalism. <laughs> well, one of the reasons it was to do with uh, the the, um, the rush for uh, um, for um, stuff around the world, for um, commodities around the world that led to uh, world war. Yeah, but you could say that that's just greed. But it's not well, capitalism. That's capitalism. No, it isn't. <laughs> it, it, it isn't. Anyway, but the, the EU, I wanted to talk about the, the EU was set up to stop wars initially. That was its kind of main main reason. Um, I can't say with the tart, whatever they call it, that pompous word. But it turned into, a, and that's why people voted to get out. It turned into a greedy, corporate, bureaucratic. Oh, please! Meals, uh, of of all of things. all the countries in Europe, we are the greediest and most corporate. What no, are you talking not, about? Uh, what What is the look? The, what has that union done for the people of this country? Oh my Absolutely. God! What, what have they ever done 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 look for us? To Greece. Are look you to insane? Greece. Half of the stuff we sell on Earth is to the European Union, and half of the stuff we buy is from the European but, Union. But that's not but that, that's not the agenda of the union. The union's agenda, right, which we're not talking about, is anti-democratic. No, it we isn't. Have... It's the it's the opposite of that. That they, they no, the is. European Union is more democratic than we are. We have an unelected head of state which oversees an unelected upper house. Which part of that seems democratic to you? You've got a good... Um, you know, your, your mind is a little bit... You know what I mean? Three-dimensional. No, I don't know what you mean. But thanks, I think. David texts, what's worse? Sadiq Khan negotiating Brexit or Donald Trump retiring to the UK? <laughs> oh, please let him not retire to the UK. You're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that way. Don't talk to... I'm the president of the United States. Don't ever talk to the president that way. <laughs> <laughs> Although he would add to the gaiety of the nation, just as long as he doesn't have any power, you know. You'd stick him on the news and he'd be flailing his arms about. I think that would be funny. We could get him to present the weather. Wouldn't that be great? Don't be rude. <laughs> Cromwell texts, Unfortunately, Bozo was democratically elected by Britain. Who elected von Leyerdom? Oh, God. She's the president of the uh, Council of the European Union. No, the European Commission. 
She's a um, a civil servant. You don't elect civil servants. She's not in charge of Europe. Oh God, it's like it's like E one o one. I can't go through that again. She's a civil servant. She's not running Europe, Cromwell. But you know what's the point? How many times have you got? To, and and see what gets me is not knowing is fine. But deciding that you know based on no information of any kind whatsoever, and sticking to that opinion that you just magicked out of the air, regardless of any information that comes your way, is infuriating. It is. I mean, I know people like you, Cromwell, don't like to be called stupid, but I'll do a deal with you. Stop saying stupid things, and people will stop thinking of you as stupid. How about that? This says, you're so negative. Have some faith. If you don't like it, leave the country. <laughs> it took a while. Two hours. If you don't like it, you, you want to go over and live in France. Yes. You mean, if I don't agree with you, I should get out of the country? Yeah. <laughs> get lost. See, the difference between me and you is I'm actually interested in the future of this country. You, my friend, are only interested in you. That's the difference between me and you. The people who wave flags and um, protest that they are the true patriots aren't. They are completely self-interested they're not patriotic at all they don't give a damn about the country only themselves but they have convinced themselves presumably because of the newspapers they read and the company they keep on the internet that they are the true patriots but it's the opposite of that the people that look around and think well you know what the pound is actually worth I'll keep saying it because this is not commonly understood look it up against both the euro and the dollar, the only two currencies that really matter, the pound is worth 25% less now than it was before the referendum. 25%. I'm not making it up. A quarter has dropped off the value of the pound in your pocket. And, and you're OK with that? Well, I'm not. I love money. <laughs> Uh, Marietta texts, Hi Nick, your friend Jeremy Corbyn has said he's going to make an important announcement at 2pm tomorrow. Any ideas? What, Uncle Jezza? Um, he's going to form a band? <laughs> he's going to um, get together with uh, some of the kids, form a dance troupe, perhaps? He's going to uh, release an album of Ken Dodd songs? I've got no idea. Disown his brother? Could be anything. God, the excitement just keeps piling up and up, doesn't it? No. No, Jeremy Corbyn's going to say he's going to make an important announcement tomorrow. Is that is that true? Yeah, that's tonight, yeah. Tonight? Well, he said that tonight. Oh, he said it tonight. Trailing it, And yeah. it's 2pm tomorrow. He's going to start. His, uh, he's going to start a, a, another political party, perhaps. We've got a few idiots in our party. <laughs> what a bizarre thing to say! I'm going to make an important announcement at two p.m. tomorrow, says Jeremy Corbyn. Does anybody care? No, not really. Is it going to be on TV? Is it going to be on uh, in, in, in Trafalgar Square, maybe? Or maybe he's going to um, uh, walk out of his front door and slash his way through that uh, jungle out <laughs> that constitutes his front garden and shout at uh, passers-by. Maybe he's, um, he's, he's going to be the new spokesmodel for the, uh, the government's advice about the coronavirus. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Here's a call in Enfield. Hello, Anne. <laughs> Hello, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Um, I'd just like to go back to the fish issue. The fish issue? The fish issue, mm. which is quite easy to say as you've got your teeth in. Um, but I remember the first time I listened to your show, 
um, there was a chap who called in from Baker Street on a Friday night, and he was very, very angry, and he said, it's all your fault. Right, well, I'd be, I'd, be ang- I'd be angry if, if I was stuck on Baker Street on a Friday night. There's nothing well, there. Yeah. No, there's not even any decent pubs there. Isn't that weird? Th- there's no song that's more famous about the London road than Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty. I mean, I bet that so- uh, somewhere in the world it's being played at this very minute, and the next minute, and the minute after. I bet it's on... 24 hours a day somewhere. Yeah, and it's so boring. It's very the good worst, sax. one of the worst roads. The street's boring, with, but with very the, good sax. With the greatest song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're in agreement on that. Well, the poor chap, he couldn't get any fish fingers or any potatoes in Sainsbury's, and he was really <laughs> looking forward to his fish and chips that night, and he said, it's all your fault, Nick. What? I don't know why it was your fault, but it was all your fault, well, apparently. Well, so that seems reasonable. this might... This might get blamed on you as well. Yeah, well, I expect so. I would like, yeah. I'd like to apologise. I am so very be sorry prepared. that I screwed up. Huh? Be prepared for the onslaught that's going to come your way. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I have great, ex- also, huge experience actually, of dealing with an onslaught. you could run away. You could go and live with Carol in France. Oh, God, no. Oh, you could. No, we'd kill each other after about five minutes. Flat, flat, oh, sharing enough. a flat. Flatmates, me and Carol <laughs> McGiffin. What do you think, Carol? No. See. Doesn't she live in a vineyard or something? I don't really know where she lives. She lives in a house in the middle... she should live in a vineyard, shouldn't yeah, she? she should, what, yeah. The way Booze. you speak about her. Mm-hmm. Right. No, I mm. think she lives in the middle of nowhere in, uh, in the south of France somewhere, mm. in a place that I can't pronounce. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I just wanted to warn you just to, you know... Prepare yourself. There all are right. gunboats in the in the channel, but just be prepared in case it all comes your way. All right, will do. Thanks for the good advice. Always be prepared and be polite. Be polite! Or I'll kill you. Yeah, I do, I do a podcast with me and Carol McGiffin, and uh, we um, try to solve people's problems. Uh, it, we have so much fun doing it. I actually look forward to doing it every week with Carol McGiffin. Let me rephrase that. I look forward to doing the podcast with Carol McGiffin every week. Oh, right, yeah. And it's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? If you want us to have a bash at your problem... We, we do actually try to solve people's problems, but um, we sometimes we forget because we're having uh, too much fun. But we try. The one that's coming out on Monday, we, um, we address the fact that the podcast keeps getting longer and the amount of problems that we try to solve keeps getting smaller. So we've actually addressed that issue, and we've helped many more people than we have over the past few episodes. So we're starting to pack them in, because that's what Jesus would want on his birthday. It's called, What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? If you want us to have a bash at your problem, N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com nick and carol at global.com that's where to send your problem and we will sort it um you can get um that podcast where you get uh, good podcasts ask for it on an internet near you what's your problem with nick and carol and prepare to be completely satisfied yeah 0345 6060 973 text 84850 email nick a at lbc.co.uk and if you're on twitter it's at lbc uh, let's have Southampton. Andy. Ah, uh, good evening. Andy. So, um, the EU got a little bit of a divorce bill, so they've got a bit of a settlement at the moment, haven't they? What do you mean? Um, Theresa May's deal, the divorce bill, they are going to get a load of money. But if there is a no deal come tomorrow night, they won't get that. So it's in their best interest to get a deal. Yeah, I, th- I think it's peanuts. Well, it's a big deal for them. So, Not really. The other thing is, when you say we're just a little country mm. and we've got nothing in the world... Well, I didn't say that. Um, but compared to giant trading blocks, which yeah. all, all countries on Earth are organising themselves into... Which countries are mounting up together? Which? Yeah. Well, it'd be easier to say which aren't. Well, the EU. They're one big block, European that's Union. That's right, yeah. And that's it. China, Japan, separate. Canada and USA don't like each other. Wow. The, the stuff you know about the trading blocks, you could write in the back of a stamp, mate. What well, you... you keep going on about it, mate. You, you, what's your yes, point? and you're what's not, and you're not listening to me. Yeah. I do keep going on about it, and you haven't listened to a word one. God, this is an educational show, isn't it? Yes. It actually, every now and again, is. 
But you are listening with your mouth, not your ears. Pay attention; you might learn something. God. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. I'm up to my eyeballs with stupid Andy. Call again next week. Maybe there'll be、uh, an opening. Do I really need to go through that again? God, it's painful. It actually is painful. It is giving me a jip. Here is a list. Detailed files. Trading blocks. You want trading blocks? I got them. Are you paying attention, Andy? When you, when yes, you, when yes, you yes or no. Yes or no. Go on. There you go. Go on. It's, it's more or less a yes, isn't it? So there's the EU. You, are you familiar with the EU? Yes. <laughs> Then there's the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Ten Southeast Asian countries plus South Korea, China, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. So you're completely wrong about that. China and Japan are in a,、uh, a hot love affair at the moment. I don't think so. I do think so. It's called RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. They're in the same trading block. I don't think so. Oh my God! You see, <laughs> see what we're up against here. I've just told him that they're in a trading block, and his response is, "I don't think so," because he knows better than Jap- than Japan and China. I don't think so. I mean, where do you go from that? The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership is a trading block made up of ten Southeast Asian countries, plus South Korea, China, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. Together, they make up nearly a third of the world's population, and account for twenty-nine percent of global gross domestic product. And his response was, "I don't think so." What can you do with that, morons? We're surrounded by morons. Leading Britain's conversation, LBC with Nick Abbott. I'm taking you off the air. I think you're having a breakdown. <laughs> is that what this is? <laughs> I know it had to be something. I'm having a breakdown. Well, thank goodness for that. That's splained it. Here's a call in、uh, France, Poitou Charente. Bonsoir, Sally. Bonsoir, mon cher. Ça va? Yeah, bien. Merci. <laughs> Are you checking your blood pressure? <laughs> well, I, I better not. For, no, it wouldn't be a good of, idea, would yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> for fear of what I might find. <laughs> oh dear. And it's calm. Uh, yes, it, it's、um, hilarious up to, up to a point. <laughs> <laughs> And then、yeah. it gets very painful. Well, it does a little bit painful. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that, uh, that's going to go down as one of the best answers、uh, in history. I, I explained that they're in a trading agreement, and his response was, "I don't think so." Great. Well, they definitely are. That's well, for sure. Well, he doesn't think so, so maybe they're not.、Uh, they definitely are. Right. <laughs> anyway, but, but just I, because it's true, Sally, doesn't mean to say it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. Yeah. Indeed. Um, one fact I was ringing、um, about—I've been curious for some time about why people are not focusing in also on、um, the fact that even though there may be no deal, there still will be an、um, island who can fish in British waters, and they are part of the EU. Well, you know、so、what's interesting is that if you look at where, hang on, I'm going to cough. If you look at where we catch our fish, it's、mm. actually, if you want to get really picky about it, it's not English fish. Most certainly, it's Scottish fish is what、yeah. is what we catch. It's、yeah. Scottish fish. Indeed, and and you know, Ireland has the right to fish in British waters,、um, <coughs> following the.、Um, Irish settlement, right. So, you know, British waters will still have 
EU fishermen in them legally. Do the French eat a lot of mackerel and herring? Because I thought that was a Danish thing. Um, there's a fair bit of mackerel, but it tends to be uh, either very fresh, mm. or uh, and that's in Normandy, or in my part of France, we get a lot of, uh, you know, kind of smoked with pepper. Right. Because the Danish, uh, or, or is it the Swedes, one of those uh, tall, uh, blonde uh, peoples, mm. they eat uh, pickled herring for breakfast. Oh, my God. Disgusting. Can you imagine waking up to a pickled herring? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. But that's what we catch round our way, uh, herring and mackerel. That's by far the biggest catch of fish round uh, British waters. And my understanding was that we sold it to the French. What do you do with it? Well, I don't know, because it, I, I think it's more northern France. Right. I mean, you know, I only breeze past the fish counter, uh, well, very rarely, but it depends which supermarket I'm in. But being a vegetarian, obviously uh. I don't stop. Um, but are, I, you, are I, you an actual vegetarian? Because I was a vegetarian for 20 years, but I still ate fish, because fish are mostly vegetables. No, well, then you're pescatarian, aren't you, really? Right. No, I, I don't eat fish. But the thing is, you know, oh, I don't know. What I mostly see when I go in the chill cabinet mm. is um, salmon. Yeah. Uh, caught in the Atlantic. Yes. And farmed. Oh. We, like, there's a big deal on uh, a farmed salmon, not deal, but there's a big uh, market in farmed salmon. Which mm. never really uh, appealed to me that much, to just swimming lazily around and around mm. in a, in a uh, tank of their own effluent. Yes, it doesn't <laughs> sound good, does it? <laughs> but, but then a lot of food production is probably just not that. to be yeah. delved into yeah, too exactly. much. Exactly, yeah. Be- better not look into it, just eat it. Close your eyes it, and uh, open your mouth, yeah. Indeed. I- incidentally, last night a lady was talking, or she mentioned Rod Stewart. Mm. If you hear strange noises, it's my cat coughing. Um, <laughs> he drank water too quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I didn't think a cat w- it was possible for a cat to drink water too quickly because they, they take it on their tongues and they use their tongues like a spoon, don't they? And they just sort of... D- d- is, yeah, but I think it goes it? on the back of the throat. Really? Well, well he's that's... coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's not a hairball? No, 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 it's not a hairball because he gets groomed every night. Right. So, and, and he hasn't been washing since he came in anyway. Oh. They got too tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> too tired? Yeah, there was a lady last night talking about Rod Stewart. Yeah. And I think she was referring to him in the 70s because I actually met him um, in, I th- well, trying to work it out. It must have been 1964. Right. This is, this is before he was famous. Yeah. And he actually made a record. I mean, when they do, um, you know, kind of the disto- discography mm-hmm. of people, uh, when they when they do his, they forget his very first record. Which was? Um, Up Above My Head, I Hear Music in the Air. Oh, i never heard of it. Right, well, but it... Well... I, I did have a copy at one point, um, right. but it got lost somewhere. Well, I, I would m- suggest that that's probably a lot of money you just lost there. Well, indeed. Uh, it's a song by Sister Rosetta Tharp. OK. And he recorded it with Long John Baldry. Right. And on the on the B-side, I do remember, is, um, or was, Good Morning Little Schoolgirl. Uh-huh. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> But didn't no, but he, wasn't his one of his first? Uh, wasn't it Boulevard of Broken Dreams, something like that, or uh, under a different name? Um, I, I, I don't know about that. This is just that. guesswork now. Yeah, uh, but but it would have been 1964 that I came across him because I right. was living in Earl's Court then. One of the greatest rock voices that this country has ever produced, and um, and but he went sort of showbiz and Vegas, didn't he? I mean, I know he had his no, his nodules. Um, cleaned or, or whatever it is that he had some mm. sort of throat problem didn't he and so he couldn't uh, bellow like he used to but, no, but goodness me when he was with the faces and uh, that the early stuff before he uh, be, 
you know, all that do you think I'm sexy uh, nonsense. Yeah. Although it's a good tune, I mean, I suppose. It, it sold millions of copies, and so you can't argue with that. But what a voice. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. Indeed, but, you know, it, it's strange how people's perception seems to be mainly in the 70s, when, in fact, you know, he spent um, a long time in the 60s. Yeah. So what was he like when you met him? Well, um, he had no money. <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> we, we Because I used to go around with a, a group of people who, you know, all... We all kind of intermingled in the 60s. Oh, intermingled? Disgusting. Yeah. Really? Well, you know how mm -hmm. it was. Yes. Well, no, I don't. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> and um, he, he, well, people used to club together yeah. to buy him a meal. Oh. And, and it was always mulligatawny soup right. followed by chicken biryani. Really? Mm. <laughs> but But, I mean... Um, the thing is about him saving his money was mostly to buy clothes. I mean, yeah, well, I was going to say, he had no money, but I bet he looked sharp. Well, yeah, I, I remember in particular... Rod the Rod, yeah. A, a three-piece um, Air Force Navy blue mohair suit. Wow. Which absolutely must have cost a bomb. Mm. Um, but you, I but, mean, you know, so you only bought the essentials, a three-piece mohair navy suit, but we couldn't afford food. No, that's <laughs> quite right. <well. laughs> you so got your you priorities go. straight, Rod. Pardon? I, I'm saying he, uh, he, oh. he, he really knew uh, what to uh, spend his cash on. Yeah. Yes, yes, and he used to borrow his mother's perfume. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no aftershave. Yeah, right. <laughs> No, no, I mean, you know, he, he, yeah, that's it. I'm not saying any more. OK, well, I, well, draw a veil over it. But yeah. my, my imagination yeah. is running wild. No, no, it's OK. okay. Yeah. Uh, but but um, there is one uh, thing about David Bowie. Yeah, you were intermingling with him as well. No, 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 no. I do have a vague collection, but it's not a personal one. No, um... He actually wrote, uh, I forget where, but it's included in a book that I've actually got. And he doesn't remember 1975 at all. Well, because it wasn't that when he was in Touring America and he was uh, up to his eyeballs in cocaine. I would guess so. Yeah. But it's actually a quote in a book. Um, and it says he doesn't remember it at all. At all. <laughs> at all. At all, Yeah, there's no, no bad to doubt it. Not one single second does he, uh, can he recall. Um, or could he recall, of course. Uh, best death ever. Let me say that uh, for the uh, hundredth time. David Bowie, best death ever. Thanks very much, Sally. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Now, wait a minute. I don't like that kind of talk. Now, just stop it. It upsets me. Yeah, sure. Why not? Mark texts, you're welcome to our Scottish fish. We don't eat that healthy rubbish. We'll swap you for a load of square sausage. Oh, my God. I remember those. <gasps> oh. I mean, the Brideys were bad enough. Because I went to school in Edinburgh, and we used to go down to the chip shop. If you haven't uh, had the, uh, the, the delights that is an Edinburgh fish supper then you ain't lived, because it doesn't come with vinegar, it comes with brown sauce. Do you want brown sauce? Yes. Absolutely I do. And then you need a shower afterwards, because you are sticky from head to foot. But the, the alternative to that was a square sausage. <laughs> Talk about mystery meat. What was that stuff? It was vi Oh, God, take that away. I do not want to see a picture of that. Take it off my screen right now. I mean it. Yeah. Deep fried square sausage. Oh. But the worst, the worst, the worst, worse than a bridey, scotch pie. I couldn't stay in the same shop as a scotch pie. I mean, what was in that? People. You're eating people. Tottenham, hello, Saul. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello. Um... I thought I'd give you a bell tonight because just a couple of things just irritated me. Give me a bell. 
<laughs> Go ahead. I haven't heard Big Ben in ages. Give me an egg. Yeah, there it I is. I love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, it's brought back memories of going yeah. up into London. Of course. I, for- <laughs> I forgot everything I was going to say now. <sighs> um, yes, that was it. So the pounds dropped a quarter, but I'm actually doing quite well off that. Great. Well done, you. I'm selling lots of stuff to stuff. the USA. Stuff. They love all buying things from here. They what? love just love buying stuff. Yeah, because it's like we're giving it away. Yeah, but the thing is, right, is that is that the UK it's very easy to start a business here and you can make stuff here and, and it's you know unusually easy compared to other European countries. You can start a business, you can make stuff and you can get it out there quick. Stuff. What stuff? Any stuff, you know, you can you can start trading of your own business and making things here extremely quickly in comparison to some other places I've seen. And I've just started a new business, and I'm selling stuff. And I've stuff? What stuff are you selling? Oh, okay. I'm selling. I sell musical instruments. Right. Um, and I and I'm selling them. My like, biggest like customer. What? what what musical instruments are you selling? I I make musical instruments out of um, recycled um, materials. Really? Yeah. What kind? Of, what kind of materials? Oh, 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 everything you saw from scrap yards, um, scrap merchants. I find it all, and I. And I fabricate it and I make it into a musical instrument and I, I, I sell it. Are these percussive musical instruments? Yes. Have you got one to hand? It's either yes or no. I was going to moan at you. <laughs> Go on, let's um, hear it. Uh, Give us a tune. Well, I haven't got... Oh, come on, stop making oh, excuses. Yes, yes, yes. One, hang on a minute. Yes. I've got one. It's normally bowed, but you can hear it played with a pencil. Right, go on then. But oh, I've it? still got. I've, if I play, I've still got something else I want to right. slightly moan at. Have you right, started right. yet? Hold on. This is this is one of the instruments I make. Right here we go. Wow, it's it's <laughs> like listening to "Saucer Full of Secrets" by Pink Floyd. Big Ruby. That's yeah. that, that was yeah, outstanding. That's right. and yeah, I, I, I put that mm-hmm. on the blurb. I put that. I'm going to use that actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the thing I just wanted to say is, is that is that it's a good time to export, and I think you know there's a lot of services we offer here that can be cheap. I was t- chatting to a friend of mine the other day who's a tour manager, and you know it, Britain is brilliant and are exporting music, but there's loads of people that understand the music business and as a tour manager. He's, yeah, he's getting but, but, loads of work outside the UK. How is he the getting moment. work? There's no such thing as a tour anymore. No, but but I'm not sorry. I backtrack a bit. But before the pounds dropped way earlier than than, than before the before the uh, yeah, yeah. the COVID situation. But before that, he started to get loads of work right outside of the UK and in the US because it was dirt cheap to hire a tour manager from here. Yeah. Yes, and we're, of so, course. If the pound is cheaper, then it will make um, it yeah. uh, goods more attractive when selling abroad. However, we don't only do that, we import too. And so everything is much more expensive to import than it used to be. I mean, if we only exported stuff and bought things that were made in this country, then it wouldn't really matter. But we're a trading nation, so it matters well, a that's, lot. That, yes, that's good, because I want to just pop, come on to like the sort of import side of things and tra- trading blocks. One thing is, you mentioned this RCEP thing. I thought I'd go and do a fact check. That's just been created, and they haven't even ratified it yet. It's just like a sort of like a print agreement in principle. So mm. I think that's a bit like quick, hot off, quick off the quick off the press. I think. Uh, no, not really. It has become the biggest trading. It, it no, supplanted. No, it ha- it's, not, it's not trading yet. It's not trading. It doesn't really matter. It's supplanted. It does. Of course, it it's doesn't. It's just an agreement in principle. No one's, it hasn't been signed off by half the country. All right. Okay. So if if World War Three breaks out, then it it won't happen. Anyway, but I just thought I just thought you know, that's by the by. But I was just looking more. I was more interested, right, in the idea about what a trading block was. And the idea about the trading block is, is that I was just thinking, oh, what is a trading block? And I thought the idea is is that is that you try and find the countries where the the the, the, the making it, it's cheaper. And then you you get a trading block with them, so they can make it cheaper. No, and no, you can no, then no, sell it. no, no, no. Most trading blocks are are um, <coughs> organised geographically because that's the thing that makes yes. sense. But in that geog- like look at the trading block with America, Mexico is where everything's produced cheaply and then it's sold in America, and it doesn't seem to have changed that. You know what I mean? Uh, and and it's the same sort of. I mean, the other thing I thought about is is that what we're going to import. I mean. Let us look at Italian wine. I mean, if I go to Italy to buy a wine, the same mm, wine is going to cost me mm. three Booze. pounds. Yes. Well, that's, but, no, that's, that's actually that's, that's not true. 
In, in Italy, wine costs three pounds. Rubbish. Yeah, a decent bottle of wine is about three pounds. Rubbish. No, 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 it's not rubbish. It's very it good wine. It is Sorry, rubbish. It's very good wine. It's Nonsense. Very good wine. There's no such thing as good wine that comes at three pounds. In Italy, there is. I don't, it's not true. Yes, it is. I buy a bottle no. of Nero Davila in Sicily for three pounds. It's fantastic. Uh, well, your descri- Actually, it's three euros. Well, your <laughs> idea of what is f- and is not fantastic wine is uh, well, is on, way then. wider than mark. <laughs> the bottle and the label and the transport and the manufacturing and the storage cost three pounds. You, you basically bought a bottle of wine, the contents of which are a penny. My point is, is that I like you mean it, you wines. mean it can get you drunk. <laughs> no, my point is is that a lot of the the, the, exp- the season wise, it's expensive. Things people say oh, it might be more expensive, you know, and whatnot. But actually, a lot of that stuff is is tax, and we can we can we can lower that. Um, and in terms of goods, we buy a lot of stuff from China, and that's all. All the prices are limited by the EU. So if we're out of that, most of our stuff comes from China, and we're probably going to get a better deal. You know, I mean, you, you, if we right. just look at the things we buy, like, like what you, is it? You think we're, we're going to get a better cars? deal with China than the European Union? No, we buy a lot of stuff from China, but it has to come through the European trade laws and everything like that. But if we're out of that, then, you know, we're not subject to any of those common prices that we have to pay. And let's look at cars. Cars are going out in, in eight years' time, all these German cars. They're all going to be people aren't going to be into them anymore. You can't even drive a car in London anymore. I mean, the, the what? Sunny car is going to million, yeah, millions is, of people drive cars in London. I drive a car in London. Oh, what are you gonna, talking it's all, about? It's all, gonna, it's all stop. In, it's in, all going to stop. Well, how are we going to get yeah. around? You are Sadiq Khan because he's going to be bringing so many yeah, charges. Yeah, Sadiq Khan is not going to be in charge forevermore, and he's not going to stop people driving in London. Good yes, grief. he is. He's going to no, he is. Oh, okay, it, all right. Sadiq Khan is going to stop people driving in London. I think um, by uh, jumping to the extreme point of all of your arguments, you're rather shooting yourself in the foot. It just uh, makes uh, me, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, listening, think that uh, you're not making any sense because you you just jump to the extreme point of an argument rather than uh, in, the, in the middle somewhere, which is probably where the truth lies. Sadiq Khan is not going to stop everybody driving in London. How the hell will we get around? Of course he isn't. But anyway, better luck next time. Uh, Nice instrument, uh, by the way. (laughs) I'm I'm sure it looks nice. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Come on, we're running late! 0345 6060 973. Here is a call in Colchester. Chris. Hi Nick, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, well, I've kind of always, uh, I've, I've, I've kind of drifted towards the Peter Hitchens kind of side of the argument, where um, I, I've always wanted to leave the EU, but maybe the referendum wasn't a great idea. Um, rather do it constitutionally, where where you get a government to to leave. But yeah, never ask the people what they think, because the danger well, is they no, might tell you. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't mean that. It's just that we've created a mess, kind of thing. But when I, when I saw the referendum and and Boris and uh, Michael Gove were in charge, I just thought, oh god, <laughs> I thought we were going to lose. You know, because Boris is a pathological liar, and uh, Gove is a well. But, but what um, what apart from everything he has ever said and done leads you to that conclusion? Liar! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I got my kind of um, EU arguments from like people like Tony Benn, and uh, when it came to to trade, I, I always thought there's good uh, the good arguments on both sides to to leave or to stay. I think that that was up in the air, and um, I'm not a fanatic with regards to leaving, but uh, and I'm just worried that I wanted to leave the EU, but I just don't trust our political system. I think it's so corrupt. Um, and I just don't trust them to do what's best for this country. Yes. It's not been about winning for me. It's, right. it's been about wanting what's best for the country. That's always and, been um, in the back of my mind, that um, being part of the European Union meant that our lot, that our government, was overseen by a larger body that was um, a, a sort of a rainbow coalition of interested parties, rather than being allowed to do whatever they blooming well like for five years, in uh, all, in pretty much complete secrecy, 
and, yeah. and I, I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. I, I want our lot overseen by some uh, by by some uh, a body that is less tainted with corruption. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't trust the EU either. I'm not, you know, I'm not in that. <laughs> I, I don't trust any. I, 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 I do want that sovereignty um, away from trade, and I, I get the argument that, that with the single market and stuff that um, that's so important to to everything. It, you know, it's complicated all mm. of that stuff. But, but there, there's, that there's that word again. There's that word again. Sovereignty. What what on earth does that mean? It, but I think well, people take it to mean that the, that they will get what they as individuals want. But it doesn't mean that at all. Well, well, say for. For COVID, for example, say if like the EU is, is going for that sort of political dominance over the, every country and uh, say Sweden wanted to do a different measure or something like they've done and then the EU takes over or, you know, just any country in Europe and they're like, sorry, you can't, you can't, everyone has to have the same, uh, I just, I just hear that kind of way. And, and, and a yes, but that, but that hasn't happened though. I mean, no, it that, that scenario does not, does not exist in real life. No, but I can see it going in that direction. That's always been but, my but that's fear. But that's just a fantasy. That's just something you just made well, up. Well, not, not really, because... Well, of course you know, it is. People, well, take the military unification, the EU Defence Union. Uh, Nick Clegg said that was a fantasy about an EU army, but the EU Defence Union is is a thing. Um, yeah, so, I, so, is I, the, so is the UN. I mean, they, they, yeah. haven't, they haven't taken over the world. No, I know they haven't taken over the world, but I, I definitely see the EU, EU Defence Union as more dangerous than the UN. I why, just, why dangerous? I just, I mean, you can't possibly think that Europe is going to form an army and then take no, over not an itself. Army. Not an army. It's just I don't want my foreign policy, our, our foreign policy, to be decided in Brussels. I, I just yes, want but that. this notion that Brussels are deciding unilaterally to do this, that, and the other is nonsense because they. They only decide things that are decided by all of the countries. Yeah, but von der Leyen even said about that. She she wants to get rid of the the veto power, and that's it. You know, we but, should not but, be. We should. We every be country naive about it. Every Can you country, not understand my answer? No, not really. It, 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 you seem to have taken what is uh, an, actually a democratic process and twisted it to some um, some imagined future where the absolute worst can happen and you want to leave because of that future that you just made up. It, and I, no, I, don't, I mean, you seem like a reasonable person, Chris, but I don't get what you're frightened of other than this, uh, other than your own imagination. Well, you're frightening me. Thanks a lot, mate. Got to move on. 0345 6060 973. Brighton. Hello, John. Hello there, Nick. Hello there, John. Yeah. Uh, no, I just... Uh, there was this other thing that's come... Another bombshell that's come this oh week. Oh, my God. Not another one. <laughs> yeah, it's like... You, you wonder whether anyone thinks of anything about this uh, Brexit and <laughs> what might happen. Mm. And then suddenly it appears in, in the news that... Uh, if we don't get a deal, we, we might not be allowed to go to Europe anyway with the COVID restrictions. Yeah, because we'll be a we'll be won't be part of Europe, no. so we'll be subject to the rules for countries outside Europe. Yeah, it'll be a foreign country. Yeah, yeah you, you'll be sort of, locked out of your second home. Yeah, it's just sort of bizarre. You think you've been part of Europe for years, just over the over the English Channel, and then. You, people won't, uh, Brit Britons won't be allowed to go to Europe during these COVID restrictions sort of things. Yeah, there was, there was there was some crowing about you know from um, leave uh, from Remainers who thought that uh, it was amusing that people who are expats in Europe you decided to retire there. They were moaning about the uh, the fact that now they'll be subject to rules, which means that they won't be able to actually live there. They'll have to spend three months there and then yeah, three months yeah. back here and three months back there. But, yep. you, but it's not good to um, gloat over that because those people, by and large, voted to remain in the European Union because it was in their interest because that's where they were living. Yep, yep. It's just like these various unintended consequences that people uh, that affect people in different ways that yeah. people haven't thought of. That's exactly and, right. Um, the law of unintended consequences, yeah. <laughs> precisely. Yeah. 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 What is anyway. that noise in the background? Uh, that's an alarm is that, it yes sounds like a cat it, i think it's a 
No, it's just a cock call thing, alarm thing. <laughs> I have to do something. <laughs> I have to do do some downloads, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> and your alarm is is the sound of yeah. a cockerel. Uh, no, that's that's one of them. That's one of the alarms. Right. It's the, it's the final one before one a.m. Five minutes before one a.m. So. Right. So it goes in a sort of a like a rising crescendo uh, of it, different it, animal it, noises. It's like a it, farmyard going it, on over yeah, there. Yeah, it's a. I think it's a cockerel alarm. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> okay. Well, I better not hold you back. Yeah. Okay. Then. All right. Thanks well, a lot, mate. Ta-da. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. So it looks like we're going into a cod war. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Well, actually, it is. Because we'll have something on the news that is not um, the virus and blooming charts and numbers and uh, death statistics. Of course, there will be death statistics if, it's, if it actually works out like a war, but not in, the, in our immediate future. Probably not till the, the new year. Because, you know, there's uh, Christmas and you don't want to start a war at Christmas. Jesus' birthday. <coughs> So, uh, it's another Cod War. Can you believe it? Now, people of a certain age will remember the Cod Wars from the first time around. I vaguely do. I mean, I was, wasn't really interested in politics, and I certainly wasn't interested in fish, unless it came in the shape of a finger. Because this was ages ago now. The Cod Wars were um, a... Uh, it was us and Iceland. Not the shop. The place. Wherever that is... Iceland versus us about fishing rights in the North Atlantic because that's where the cod are. Mm, mm, all that tasteless fish that we love so much. And there was um, there were four of them up to like 1976, I think. Something like that. So that was us, Britannia of the high seas, lord of all we surveyed. 55 million fish fans at the time in this country. 55 million of us. We had 37 Royal Navy gunships and we picked a spat about sprats with a country of 207,000 people. So there was 55 million of us and 207,000 Icelanders. You know, people in funny jumpers with unpronounceable names. And a navy that amounted to two tugboats and a bright yellow rubber duck bath toy. <laughs> and we still lost. We lost the lot. 3 nil to Iceland. And the last one was in 76. Mind you, I think that it's reasonable to say that in 1976 we had an excuse. We were busy. We were busy creating the music that caused a revolution. And we mean it, man. Rock and roll! So let's not go there again, because our, um, uh, our results so far, poor. I mean, Iceland we lost to. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Is this, is this the same bloke that I just talked to? Huh? He's still there. He's still there. You're still there, John. Uh, Hello? Ecstasy of fumbling. How did the, um, how did your thing go? Hello? Are you still with there? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to hang up on me. It can't go the other way around. You have to hang up on me. I've never asked anybody to do this before, but please hang up on me. I'm begging you. We appreciate your cooperation. Thank you. If you um, well, wish to uh, avail yourself of any part of this or last night's show that you missed, uh, then you can. It's available on a podcast almost straight after this show. Is that right? 90 minutes. 90 minutes after the end of this show, like I said. It's called uh, the whole Nick Abbott, The Whole Show. It's one of the three podcasts I do. Just do an internet search on my name, Nick Abbott Podcasts, and all of them will be revealed as though by magic. This is LBC. Now, I won't, like I say, I won't be doing all that this again. The only reason I'm sharing it is because I just thought it was brilliant the way he just debunked everything that, that all the, you know, all the cliches about 
how Brexit's going to be and whether it's from this Norway deal right up to trading blocks. I love the love the analogy and the way he just handles these Brexit loans. So I'll I'll just leave this video here and and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll go back to what I normally do t tomorrow. So take care everyone and uh, bye for now.